Hey there, radio engineering friends, Kirk Harnack, and I just got done testing a, a little bit of a complicated setup that I'm really excited about because even though it's complicated, it makes my life easier in getting three or someday four uh, STL signals to a transmitter site and having a backup. Actually, the main is already there. So here's what I'm talking about. In Mississippi, we've got some radio stations. We used to have four. Now we have three, but someday it may be back to four again. Um in Greenville, Mississippi, and we are using an IP radio to shoot live wire, real uncompressed linear live wire from the studio to the transmitter site. Now, the transmitter site is in a little wide spot in the road called Heads, Mississippi, 650 foot tower there. And we're using uh, ubiquity IP radios and sending live wire there. Our cost of this STL system going 13 miles was actually pretty low. We just had to add a single Axia X node at the transmitter site that was under $2,000 and then add the two IP radios. We chose the Air Fiber 5s and then, the, of course, the uh, the Cat5 cable and the grounding and all that kind of stuff. Altogether, we spent under $5,000 to build a an STL system capable of at least four stereo and it's bi-directional too. So I've done stories about that in the past. There's information on the TELUS Alliance website. There's a blog post about that and a couple of videos here and there. Now, that's great and that's fine, but we didn't have a backup. We had this IP link and it was great and it sounds fabulous and it's been pretty reliable. We've had some weird atmospheric conditions from time to time that do make it chatter a bit. Uh, and uh, but, but, you know, I'm a little worried. I want to have a backup. Well, recently we were able to get Internet service to this rural transmitter site in Heads, Mississippi. We got it because the, the tower is also acting as a hop point for a wireless ISP uh, that's based out of Greenwood, Mississippi. So we we got some internet there. About six megs down, meg and a half up is what we're allotted there at the transmitter site. So that's good. Now we can receive at least our internet streams. I could make special streams just for this, but you know we also have some limited bandwidth at the studio site. So I'm picking up our internet streams on a, a PC. I put a PC at the transmitter site, and I'm running four instances of VLC. Uh, later on, I'll have an embedded uh, program that runs as a service. But for now, uh, four instances of VLC running and picking up our various stations. So you can see right here on the screen, I'll show you. You're looking here at uh, the PC that is in Heads, Mississippi, at the transmitter site. So I've got VLC running, picking up WIBT, WIQQ, WDTL, and WNIX. Okay? Um, now, I, again, I'm using an, an Axia X node at the transmitter site to feed analog audio to my audio processors. The processors are all at the transmitter site. And I want to be able to switch between a live wire source coming from the studio, that's our normal feed, and I want to switch over to a an AOIP audio source there in the building. And I don't want that to be live wire or I don't want it to be a, a stream that is multicast. I don't want it to have to go back to the studio to the core switch and then come back to the transmitter site. Because, again, sometimes the problem may be the IP link is down. And I don't want to wait around for all the refiguring and the spanning tree and all that stuff. I just want to switch to something that I know is going to work. And so I decided to, on this PC where I'm picking up the four streams, I'm using the Axia IP audio driver, but I'm not putting out live wire from that driver. I'm actually putting out uh, AES67. In fact, let me bring that up and I'll, uh, I'll give you a look at, uh, at what that looks like. This is the new version of the Axia IP audio driver. And as you can see, here are my four streams being created. And uh, there it looks like four sound cards. And each of the VLC instances is looking at a different one of these virtual sound cards. And each one is putting out low latency stereo AES67. Okay. And there's the, uh, the network interface card that it's going through. There's two NICs in this particular computer. So that's a pretty standard live wire setup, except I'm not using live wire. I'm using... AES67, which uh, I'm going to get rid of this now, which is um, which has got SIP unicast available in it, too. That's the key. I want a unicast stream to subscribe to at my node. I don't want a multicast signal, which has to go somewhere else first for, um, you know, just the way multicast works. So um, uh, what we have here, here's a look at the node. And if I look at the destinations, the output of the node here are the four things I would normally have it subscribed to. These are four channels which exist at the studio, and they're live wire. They're standard streams. Uh, but here's our 
are uh, different program channels, which also contain uh, the EAS interruption. So these channels 241, 43, 37, and 47, those are those four radio stations. Uh, I have WNIX there as an example because it's the one that I'm actually not using at the transmitter site so I can play with it and not interrupt anything. All right, so there's my node. Now, if I want to switch to the output of this computer, in other words, I want the node to uh, output to subscribe to a stream that's local there at the transmitter site, um, I, uh, I don't have Pathfinder PC, and I certainly don't have a, a version of it running at the transmitter site. So what I would have to do is type in SIP colon um, 4 at 10.216.0.193, and that would and hit hit apply, and that would subscribe me to the um, the local uh, uh, output of the the fourth output of the IP audio driver on this PC. Well, that's a lot of typing. And if I'm you know if this goes off the air in the middle of the night, I don't want to have to wake up and you know type literally um, what uh, a twelve well four octets worth of numbers here dotted decimal octets. So I thought well. Maybe there's an easier way to switch this. Well, along comes Anthony Eden. <laughs> Here we go. Here's, here's the story of the day. Along comes Anthony Eden from Australia, and he has written this little program called the Livewire Simple Delegation Switcher. And uh, I, he came out with it. And I said, Anthony, you've got to make a version of this, or you've got to upgrade it to where instead of just allowing a uh, uh, an Axia or a Livewire channel number to be uh, configured in it, we need to be able to to specify a SIP address. And so, bam, it wasn't 40, no, 24 hours later, maybe less than that, that Anthony had a version 1.3 now that um, will will allow this, allow you to put a, a SIP address in there. So you saw when I typed that in there, you may have noticed that the button color changed over here. Uh, now, this is only affecting the output number four, uh, this instance of the, of the switcher, but I can click uh, normal IP audio there. Now, I'm going to have to go refresh the, uh, the the browser and you can see it subscribed to 247 the stream coming from the radio station uh, over the ip link but if i click back up internet stream well and refresh the browser uh, then you'll see it subscribed to the uh, ip driver output on the computer which is carrying the internet stream of wnix and you know hey i just i had five buttons here i could have taken some away i could have added more but i just want to see if it works so i can click premiere talk shows and refresh this, and it subscribes to channel 214, which happens to be my Axia channel number back at the station for the premier talk shows. Westwood One talk shows as well. I can subscribe to that directly, get that out there directly. Or if, hey, let's say WNIX is completely down for some reason, and I just want to put one of my other radio stations on um, on this transmitter that doesn't exist there, I can click WDTL Internet Stream, and it's going to subscribe to SIP3, the third output of this IP driver, which, as you can see right up here, is the WDTL Delta Country stream from the public internet. Lots of explanation there, but it actually works. Uh, I'm going to bring. I'm, I'm also browsed in at the same time, remoted into um, another computer back at the station. So I'm sending the output of this node. Right, that's what I'm switching the output of an X node to go feed a a processor. I'm just looping it back into the node and sending it back to the radio station, and I can listen to it back there. Well, of course, it's Delta Country right now, but let's go to the normal IP radio. There you go. That's the normal uh, IP radio. We'll go to the backup Internet stream, and there's the backup Internet stream. Let me refresh that. You can see SIP4. Or well, I could go directly from the satellite receiver uh, out to here, and there it is, directly from the satellite receiver, and there's the channel, 216. So um, I don't want to fight with the audio there, so uh, there we go. It works. Uh, I'm delighted to say that Anthony Eden's little program works great. It controls the node output. Uh, this particular version is kind of a, a, a an X by one. So you know you select any input that you want to control one output. Maybe later on he would come up with uh, more of a matrix setup uh, or even a one button salvo that I can click one button and move all of my transmitters from the IP radio feed over to their respective internet streams. That would be pretty interesting too. But for now, hey, it works. I'm absolutely delighted. I'm going to put that back on the internet stream and uh, refresh that, make sure it went back to there. Yep, SIP4, and we're done. How about that? Thanks, Anthony. And uh, this is just a great example of how extensible 
uh, audio over IP is, especially live wire, where, um, hey, if you're a programmer, you can get access to understanding uh, the, uh, the, you know, the live wire routing protocol and um, do this kind of thing for yourself. Really appreciate Anthony and the other developers around the world who have made other products that work with, uh, with Axia. I'm Kirk Harnack. Thanks for watching.